Welcome to LA Interview. My name is Joseph Armillas. This week's guest is Lisa Gershuni, a talented actress making her way through the complicated maze of the acting business in Hollywood. Her interesting story next on LA Interview. Welcome to LA Interview, Lisa. How are you? I'm good. Thank you for having me. Oh, it's great to have you here. In your um, actor's biography, mm -hmm. you mentioned that you are a born-again actress. Yes. What does that mean? It means I kind of had a period of uh, falling out of love with acting. I see. And then I kind of returned to it after um, going down a path that wasn't really right for me okay. for some time. I kind of, um, I guess, resisted the urge. You know, I always had the urge to act within me, and then I just pushed it away thinking this is too hard. It's not for me. I want to do something with a paycheck every Friday. Right. <laughs> and then just doing that for a couple years made me realize what I really want to do is act. Right. And, you know, having, you know, good health insurance and a paycheck every Friday is not the key to happiness. No, not always anyway. Not, and it's certainly not for me. I grew up in a family um, of actors. That's right, that's right. And my mom was in the theater and she kind of did like a, a yes, no with, with all three of us kids. And she said to us, you know, uh, I'm gonna take you to this audition, but just know, you know, <laughs> you might not get it. And it's if you get it, it's gonna be hard. And, right, and this right. is why it's gonna be hard. And they may not like you and they may say mean things to you. And so she would take us to the auditions. And of course we would book them because we were in North Carolina. And we were all very talented. Right, of course. And, <laughs> <laughs> and um, we, we, we were constantly doing theater growing up. And, but she always told us this business is very hard and it's very cutthroat and it's very competitive and it's hard to make money. And she would always tell us the dark side of it. Right, the, the plus and the minus, which mm -hmm. is true about the business. Right, but she said, if it's fun for you, I'll take you. Right. And it kept being fun for us. And so all three of us... Uh, you know, did tons of theater all through high school and college and middle school and elementary even. And in college, I was the only one who said, no, this is not for me. It's too hard. And I got a real degree in, uh, in, in communications, communications and art history, art history, okay. which was my fun major. Yeah, yeah. But I still had that little bug within me that was sure. like, I want to do this. So I still performed uh -huh. for fun. And I also minored in film. So I learned... Oh, okay. um, about screenwriting and I learned about editing and everything which has actually been very useful. Sure, sure. So I still kind of you know had the desire to do it whereas my sister I mean just went to a musical theater program and my brother went to an opera performance program and they were like 100% in it whereas I just kind of had a toe in the pool. Right, right, right. And um, then I moved to Los Angeles and got a real job in the business, but just on the other side of the camera and just did what, that. Were you doing production, assistant production? What were you doing? I started, I did a little bit of production and then I went to William Morris Agency before it became William Morris Endeavor. And I was an assistant, which was oh. very interesting. I, I bet. had a I lot bet. of yeah. good agent stories. They're all true. Anything people tell you <laughs> about agencies, any horror what, stories, whatever you heard, it's they true. are 100% oh, true. God. Uh, that, yeah, every single one is true. I have some of my own that are <laughs> shocking. I, I, you know, I believe it. Yeah. yeah, very big personalities. That's I really learned how to curse. <laughs> Oh my gosh, I was a little girl who went to Vanderbilt and I was like on the dean's list and then I got off. Suddenly the... became Miss Potty Mouth. Right? Oh my gosh, it was F-bombs everywhere. I mean, it was F this, F that, F... It was, it was really intense. I had to relearn how to speak after William well, Morris because yeah. I was just a sailor. Right, right. And because it, it was, you get it from your boss, you get it from the other, I mean, everyone. Especially out here in LA it where people crazy. normally don't curse. You know, they're not, uh, like, I'm from the East Coast originally. Mm -hmm. When I came out here, it was like, you know, I was dropping F-bombs everywhere. Isn't People were horrified. <laughs> and then finally... Go to an agency. They won't be well, horrified Well, right. I, that They'll maybe I you. should have done that. <laughs> <laughs> 
So that gave you a lot of experience in terms yes. of knowing that part of the business as an actor. Absolutely, and I, I didn't come at it from an actor angle. I came at it to try and get into television, right. which I, after doing a year at William Morris, my boss was very nice to me and helped me get a job at NBC. Oh, how nice. And then it was like, oh, Mecca, this is where I need to be. And sure. I kind of very quickly realized this isn't where I need to be. I see. And I was there for three years. I knew, don't tell my boss, <laughs> sorry. sorry. I knew about six months into it that it wasn't what I wanted to oh, do. Oh, wow. Because okay. um, at NBC, as an assistant, you look at your boss, and most people say, I want to be her, or I want to be him. I want to do what they're doing. I don't want to answer phones and do a calendar. Right, right. And I looked at my boss and said, I never want to be you. Right. I don't ever want to do this. And I knew that pretty quickly. But I stayed because great benefits, right. a lot of good perks, a lot of good parties, a lot of good ac you know. I went to like the office wrap party for every season. Oh, wow. You know, just really good access to things. And I, the more I went, the more I realized... I want to be those people. Right. I don't want to be on this side of things. So eventually I just kind of planned my escape, <laughs> the escape from Alcatraz. Right. Uh, <laughs> and I, you know, I planned it out. I'm very much like goal oriented and a type A personality. And I made lists and, you know, made budgets and figured out how am I going to do this for real as a business person. Which a lot of actors don't do. Yeah. So I definitely had that yeah. advantage yeah, of you did. Yeah. coming at it from the business side. Almost a business point of view. Mm -hmm. yeah. Absolutely. And it has been very helpful for me because I feel like I in some ways have an advantage over some people who've never worked on the business side sure, of it. Because sure. I do realize like this isn't for fun. The acting part, we do find joy in it. Of course, yeah. But the vast majority of what we do, unfortunately, especially at this level, yeah. when you're just starting out, is business. Business. Is auditions and running your business. A lot of and it's and it's not like you're acting five days a week because no. you're not. What no. you should be doing five days a week is marketing right. and, make, and updating your website and, and networking. Networking, networking yeah. That's the big one. So that's all, those are business skills. And sure, yeah. I was um, kind of lucky that I, I learned all that before making the leap into acting. Right. So that's, when I say born again, to make a long, long story short, <laughs> when I say born again, I kind of mean I've come back, I've, come back to it after to a hiatus. It, right. That's right. That's I had a right. hiatus. Yeah, but you had a lot of experience yeah. before you came to Los Angeles. So it's not like you suddenly, at whatever point in time, yeah. said, oh, I'm going to be an actor. That's no. it. You, know, you, you had done the work already. I've been, I mean, I've been acting and singing Sing. since I was, singing probably since I could speak. Right. Oh, we wow. were, um, my Music, mom was. Musical family as well. Very musical. I'm the, actually the only one who didn't pursue music as well as acting. Right. And I am a good singer. I just never, I, I don't view myself as a great singer because my sister and brother have studied for so many years. My right. brother just got his master's in opera from the right. New York. School, like from this crazy serious, school, serious singing. very serious legit, singing. Legit, what they call legit singing. So for me, I'm like, I can kill karaoke, right. <laughs> but you know. Well, but if a part calls for absolutely. for a singer uh, or or an actor that sings, you could definitely do absolutely. it. Absolutely, and I've auditioned for several, and um, I actually have an audition coming up for a singing role, which All right. is which is great because I do love singing. It's uh -huh. just not, you know, I don't have my masters in it or anything, but. For our purposes, and when they auto-tune Glee, yeah, right. Uh, hello. I can totally do that. <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, oh, that's. I'm like, they auto-tune that stuff. Oh, don't yeah, for, tell me all this. I think a lot of people don't know what auto-tune is, but it's a piece of software that will correct whatever mm -hmm. uh, whatever sins you've committed while recording audio. So <laughs> that's exactly right. And there are a few uh, famous singers who use it uh, rather liberally. Yes. But we're not going to say. We won't call them out. <laughs> Bro, hello. <laughs> oh my God, that's funny. So um, the thing that I found very interesting about you and, and you know very exciting is that you come out of NBC mm -hmm. and almost right away in terms of you know however long it usually takes actors to, to book a speaking part, mm -hmm. you, got, you got in pretty fast. And obviously, that, that says a lot about your talent, but also your oh, ability you. in a way, or and I guess a very good dose of luck as well. I It's funny. I'm reading a Tony Robbins book right now, and I just read a chapter about luck, and it's... You make your own luck. Exactly. Yeah. That's kind of the thing. It's just um, consistent action towards a goal right. 
is Stick creating with. luck. Right. And you, of course, have to have the talent to back it up. But I feel like for so long, I have worked on my acting craft, even if I didn't even realize it. Even if I was just doing a stupid musical in high school, I was working on my craft, you know, for years. So right. it's not like, boom, she hits. And right, right, right. No, you know well, I, mean? I didn't mean to put it that way, but, you know, I don't. But I, I do understand what you're saying, and, you know, I, I have lots of actor friends, and they're like, you're doing so great. Right. But, um, I don't know, I guess I view it as, I haven't just started, like, 18 months ago. I guess I view it more, I started way back when, and this is like a return. Right. It's not a sprint. It's, acting is a marathon. It's completely a marathon. Right. What was your first thing that you booked that, that opened up, uh, you know, the opportunity to, to do a speaking part? The first thing that I booked was, the first big thing, I would say, was Days of Our Lives. And wow, okay. that was just a pure example of networking. Um, sorry to any actors. Who, <laughs> I really barely auditioned for it. Um, it was more, I worked at NBC. I knew the people who did Days of Our Lives. Right. I took her out for lunch. And I said, can you get me, I didn't even, I didn't ask for anything I, other than a meeting. I said, is there any way I could get a meeting with this person? And she said, I'll give you her email, I'll, you know, and then the rest is up to you. Right. And, you know, I had a quick meeting and she said, oh, you're great, here, read this. And she was like, oh, you're booked. <laughs> and then, you know, can you work next week? Yeah. And that's how I got Days of Our Lives. And that really opened up a lot of doors for me because then I had a TV credit. Right. You know, right. from having just student films and theater and right. training on right. my resume, boom, you have something everyone's heard of. Right. And right. it was a speaking part, which was great. You know, it was a little bit of money, which was amazing. Right. But also, more importantly, it added something really nice to my resume. And from that, I was able to uh, find an agent and a manager wow. um, just from having one TV credit. So it really is amazing you know, the speed with which it happened, but truly that was networking. And that's something that was such a wonderful lesson for me because really it's who you know in this business. Of course, you have to have the talent to back it up. Sure. But who you know is so important. Sure. And just being able to ask somebody, hey, can you put me in a room right. with this person? Yeah. And that's that's a powerful place to be. That in. is a powerful place. You know? It's just that getting to that one person that's going to mm -hmm. you know going to connect you somehow or or give you the job you know? exactly yeah. and then you know then you get one and then as soon as you get i mean everybody knows work begets work absolutely yeah so you get one tv credit it's that first credit yeah exactly right. so for me it was just all networking for the first one and then from that i got an agent and from there they got me some auditions for television and then i got you know another television series body of proof and then from that another one 90210 and you know from having these clips on my demo then I was able to get feature auditions and all this other stuff wow. and it's just it just snowballs like that so <laughs> and then I got my first commercial a uh, couple weeks ago so that was really oh, exciting wow. that's great we're gonna play uh, a, a few clips of your work right now oh, so perfect. That people can see it enjoy Well, thank you for coming, Francine. I really want this job. I appreciate your enthusiasm. No, you don't understand. I really want this job. I need this job. I love dead people. Where's Carla? Who? The birthday girl. This tall, never smiles. Oh, you mean the chick that knows Naomi Clark? She's gone. What do you mean, gone? I'm dead. She went upstairs with a football player or something. This place has like 20 bedrooms, so good luck. Oh, good lord! What happened to my sub? I don't know. Hey, Chief, did you take my sub? No, this one got avocado on it. Oh, mine had avocado on it. Well, how about that? <laughs> I don't. I'll be fine when I'm done. Thanks. Well. Get your own Subway Chipotle steak and cheese with avocado, the rich superfood. Or add it to your favorite sub. It's avocado season at Subway. Uh, I love all the different looks. Of course, oh, the goth girl and, yeah. and, and uh, the commercial. It's, you look so different in the commercial, which is great. Yeah. From, you know, the, uh, for an actor to have all the different looks. It's funny. I, uh, 
my mom, ever since I was very little, was always putting makeup on me. Again, <laughs> stage mom. <laughs> you should see my Halloween pictures from age two. I mean, she decked me out oh, in all wow. this makeup. And she's always told me. Good training for you. For right? Actor, I mean, right? I had on a blonde wig. Ton <laughs> I was Marilyn Monroe. And bl at, at two? Oh, yeah. Oh, and that's wearing, funny. Like, I had a fur on, a little, like, baby fur mink. It was ridiculous. And um, just tons of makeup. And she always told me. You just have a face. You can really wear makeup. Uh, and it's funny. I came out here and my first manager said, you really are somebody who can take makeup. She said, go get a goth picture just for fun. Just for fun. Go get a goth look picture. Look where that got you. <laughs> and I got a goth picture. And, you know, just put on a little eyeliner, a little black lipstick. Here we go. And I booked two things from that. One picture. And it's funny. I see myself on camera as that goth girl. And I'm like, who is, Who is that? that girl, right? She is so scary. When they do your bio on the Biography Channel, you'll have all those photographs from your childhood that they can put on the show. Yeah, just right? me, like Lisa Gershuni this week, you know. <laughs> <laughs> but it's it's fun to be made up and to just wear way too much makeup and because I've got big lips and you put black lipstick on it, it's just like, <laughs> so it's fun. So, what are you working on now? Uh, right now, I'm writing my first pilot. Oh. Cool. And it's called Roomies. And Roomies? I'm, okay. I, you know, I do have a very savvy business mind. And, you know, when you're in the union, there's not always a lot of work, especially in the summer. So this it's a, true. it's a great time to self-produce. I mean, you right. know, obviously all about, you right. know, producing your own stuff. And, you know, I think it's a wonderful opportunity to do roles you really want to do. So Roomies is kind of like a sitcom exactly. kind of, kind of Two girls or a girl and a guy, it's whatever. It's a comedy and it's a girl and a guy. Okay. And she, oddly enough, <laughs> oddly has enough a, is, you. <laughs> is me and has a great job. Right. And is has her stuff together. Right. And this guy who doesn't have his stuff together. Right. Played by my boyfriend. Okay. And that's kind of how we met was he was this comedian who, you know. Oh, he's a comedian? He, actor? He's actor and comedian. Okay. All right. And... He just doesn't have his stuff together at all. You know, he stays out till four Typical. drinking. <laughs> and I, you know, have to wake up at 8 a.m. to go You're to like my, my big corporate job. You're like the type of personality job. always, you know, going for yeah. for the goal. Exactly. Right. And they just kind of end up that they are living in the same apartment mm. and then eventually fall in love. Of course. So we're working on that. Roomies. And, I like this. That yeah. sounds very exciting. And it's fun to write your own stuff because... You can write it exactly how you would speak. Absolutely. And it can really showcase your talent in the best possible That's way right. because they're your own words and it's your own point of view. This is true. From the beginning, not just acting somebody else's words, right. but your own. And then you can produce it and then you can edit it and right. really make it the best version that you want to, uh, the best version of you that you want to put out there. And also, it's a great learning experience mm -hmm. for an actor because you learn so much of what the whole process is yeah. from writing to pre-production, production, post-production, post -production, mm -hmm. editing. It's 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 good knowledge to have for an actor. Absolutely. And you know, I did, you know, minor in film in college, right. so I do have all this knowledge. I, you know, I've Use never, it, sure. I've never paid to edit a demo reel. I, did, I edit my own demo reel. Right. You know what right. I mean? And I, you know, made my own website and I do all that stuff myself and you know, that, and then I can have more money for acting class. You know what I mean? Exactly. Why should I pay exactly. somebody to put two clips together when I know how to do it? You know how to do it, exactly. And I'm just going to learn more and more and more through the process. So I'm, d I'm really excited. It's the first thing I've produced since college. So I'm very Good. excited to get back into that and to write again and and direct and edit and mm -hmm. tell people what to do, which is one of my favorite things to do. <laughs> of course. <laughs> well, I'm very, we're very excited for you. and. Thank you. Uh, We'd love to have you back in the show uh, after you've, you've uh, posted your, your show or you produced Absolutely. it. Absolutely. And then we can talk about that. For sure. Thank you so much Thank for coming so to LA much. Interview. Thank you so much. It was lovely. It was really nice talking to you. I hope you enjoy the show. If you'd like more information about Lisa Gershuni, you can find her at imdb.com or at her website, www.lisagershuni.com. Thanks for watching. We'll see you next time on LA Interview.